If you're watching this, then I assume you're familiar with Swift extensions. A Swift extension allows you to add functionality to a type, a class, a struct, an enum or a protocol. But extensions are more powerful than that. In this episode, I'd like to show you four clever uses of Swift extensions. The Swift programming language mentions that extensions can be used to conform an existing type to a protocol. While this isn't new or revolutionary, it can also help you keep your code organized. Take the UI Table View data source and UI Table View delegate protocols as an example. This example may look familiar. This is fine, but it results in a lengthy class implementation that can become difficult to navigate over time. You can keep your code organized by creating an extension for each protocol the type conforms to. Navigating source files also becomes easier if you make it a habit to use the jump bar at the top of Xcode's source editor. I learned the next trick from Chris Eidhoff. For this example, we first need to define a structure, person. The structure defines two constant properties of type string, first and last. Swift generously creates an initializer for us, init first last, which we can use to instantiate an instance of the person structure. This isn't new. Unfortunately, the initializer is no longer available if we define a custom initializer in the struct's definition. Fortunately, we have an easy workaround to resolve this issue. We create an extension for the person struct in which we define the custom initializer. We can take the previous example one step further. A few years ago, Natasha Murashev outlined a technique that uses extensions to separate state from behavior. If we apply this technique to the previous example, we end up with something like this. The type definition only defines the stored properties. An extension is created for the behavior of the type, that is, methods and computer properties. The result is a clear separation of state, stored properties, and behavior, methods and computer properties. We can take this one step further by creating a second private extension for private behavior. Code separation and organization is very easy to do using extensions. I use it all the time. If you miss Objective-C's header files, then this is a nice alternative. The Swift programming language mentions that extensions also allow you to define and use nested types. But I feel this feature is undervalued. I use it in every Swift project, for example, to define constants. A few months ago, I published a tutorial about building a custom control using a bitmask. In that tutorial, we store the raw value of the bitmask in the user defaults database. Instead of using a string literal, we use a constant. We create an extension for the user defaults class in which we define an enum without cases, keys. The enum defines one static constant property of type string, schedule. The result is quite nice if you ask me. Not only can we group constants, avoiding literals that are scattered throughout the codebase, we also namespace the constants. In other words, the constants are easy to remember and make sense. With the release of Swift 3, Apple adopted a similar technique in some of its frameworks. Extensions are quite powerful in Swift, and the techniques I showed you in this tutorial are only a few examples of what's possible. If you want to learn more about the Swift patterns I use in my projects, then download the free book I wrote to help you improve the code you write. Learn the four Swift patterns I swear by is a free download, and it has helped thousands of developers step up their game with four easy to implement patterns. Visit cococast.com slash patterns to download the book. Drop me a line if you have any questions or feedback. I'd love to hear from you.